Hello everyone, welcome to Production and Operations Management and this is uh, chapter 4, forecasting and we are going to look at a problem, a forecasting problem that involves in trend and seasonality. So the first thing we have to do here is we look at the data set and then we have to try to see the trend on this data set. What you can do is you can just create a line chart and find a trend there and using that approach you'll be able to get the intercept and slope but I want to just enter the time time series here I want to enter the time periods and in the time periods I want to just increase them from 1 to and go up to period 36 and in that case I will be able to uh, find my intercept and slope using the time periods and the demand values so let me just put the intercept here and the slope there here and I'm gonna use the function intercept so then I'll have to choose the the demand and the period so let me just do something else so instead of just highlighting an area I'm going to call this the whole range and I will name that so I can click on the first number for demand then I can press Control shift and down arrow and highlight all the numbers and go to the corner where it says D2 I want to change that into demand so now Excel knows the range from D2 up to D37 is demand so I want to do a similar thing for the months and I want to Control shift down and call this as my month and then for the time periods the same way I'm gonna call this as period now in that case it's gonna be easy for me to find this slope and intercept formulas enter them so I will say intercept and my known y's are the demand and my known x's are the periods so that easy and I do not need to worry about yeah putting dollar signs or anything if I name the ranges now I can do the same thing for slope but I'm gonna be lazy I will copy this over but then instead of typing intercept here I'm gonna type slope so you could directly enter these values if you want you could just say slope and demand and period so that's gonna work now we are able to get the the linear trend forecast we can get using this intercept and slope so in that case I will put here linear trend forecast uh, maybe I could just shorten that I can say LT forecast so my linear trend forecast in that case it's going to be equal to the intercept now I could just put the dollar sign plus slope times the time period and go to the corner double click and just make the accuracy two decimals and done so I am able to get the linear trend forecast but as you realize the demand changes with some uh, every month it's it's a different value so we have to adjust the value based on the changes on these demand values so let's see this on a graph so I will create the demand and the, the linear trend forecast values on a chart so I can insert a line chart with these values and you can see that my linear trend forecast captures the trend but it's not able to capture these ups and downs that periodically happens in a systematic way so in this case what we have to do is we have to adjust our values for every month and then we'll say okay if this is the linear trend value but for this month I have to be maybe expecting less demand because this is what usually happens so to do that I'm gonna let's let me just delete this chart what I have to do is I will uh, look at the demand in January so for every January I will look at the demand and I will take the average January demand 
and then I will divide that by the, the average demand throughout all three years then I will find the difference between January and the average demand so that's going to be a ratio of the January demand over all demand values so let's try to see that so I'm going to put here month and I will copy these uh, all these 12 months here and paste them here then I will say seasonality index so the, the to calculate the seasonality index I will have to find the average January values divide by the total uh, the average in general the the grand average so how do I find the average demand of January values there are three of these so if I just add 334 plus 266 plus 233 there are three January values and find their average that is going to be my January average then I will divide that by the overall average then I will find my January seasonality index so to do that I will use this average if function so average if function is going to take a range so my range is the month all these months so Excel highlighted all the months and then my criteria is if it is if they are equal to January then my average range is demand so this function is going to find my average uh, demand in January then I will have to divide that by the average of demand and okay so my seasonality index comes to be 1.08 and I formatted this already so if yours have more decimals just go ahead and change it to a number and then I will double click and I get all the seasonality indices now if I have the seasonality index values for every month then I can find my seasonal forecasts with trend okay so the title is kind of long so I will have to do that in that case I what I have to do is I have to then multiply by linear trend forecast value by the seasonality index value so for January I'm going to expect more than the linear trend suggests so my value is going to be higher than the linear trend but for March it's going to be slightly lower for June it's going to be more downside so 0 0.93 times my linear trend so I'm adjusting my values my linear trend forecast values by the seasonality effect so here's my table I'm going to use this table and I will use for January 1.08 so I can just highlight this area and call this range as my seasonality index so it is syndex I just came up with this name and I liked it okay good so it is syndex and what's gonna happen is I will take the value 1.08 for this number but I'll have to take 1.04 for the other number then I'll have to go back to the January again so what I can do is I can use the VLOOKUP function to look for my value in this table and then what when I find that 1.08 then I will multiply that number by 191.68 so my lookup value is going to be January where do I look at it in my table uh, it was syndex actually it's, how did I forget my popular name okay so it's syndex and then whenever we are able to find January in the syndex then I will return my second column value not the first column the second column in this table 
so the, the this table has two columns so I'm gonna put two so it will make sure that it selects 1.08 and then I will have to say that I want to just get the exact match so January February I want to get the exact name so it's gonna be true was it true for the exact match no it's false I'm sorry so false then I close my parentheses and enter this one gives me my my seasonality index value so what I have to do is I have to multiply that number by 191.68 so I will say times my linear trend enter and double click and I will I'm able to find all my seasonally adjusted forecast values in here so we have learned a, a number of functions here we first learned how to name a range we learned the average function we learned the VLOOKUP function and all these details and if you can utilize these functions in other classes or in your real life that would be awesome so let's just look at now the demand linear trend forecast and seasonality forecast in a chart I want to highlight everything here Control shift down and then I will create insert a line chart I can see here all my values and my forecast is not exactly following the ups and downs but it is trying to follow so here in the 2006 range January to March we are seeing that the uh, the actual values uh, fluctuate more than my uh, forecast but this is uh, going to be better than what you have in the linear trend so if you calculate the MAD values for linear trend and this one this is going to provide you a lower number so it's going to be better forecasting method so what's going to happen in 2017 now so for 2017 I could just highlight these months and what I could do is I can take this 25 to 36 and I can go to up to 48 okay so I could put here uh, 2017 and I can cap put these months as well then the only thing I have to do is I have to just drag this this two down not the actual values but these two numbers down just double click and we are able to get the forecast for all the months of 2017 we have the linear trend forecast and seasonal forecast with trend values thanks for watching